All right, people, let's get into it. I am Garrett, and today we are talking about filters. Lens filters are one of the single most important tools in any camera operator's bag, and that's because they can dramatically shift or affect the image that we are recording, right? We can change our exposure, we can change our halation, we can change the bloom, we can change glares and reflections, we can add effects to something optically uh, right in camera. Understanding what filters are, how they affect our image, and of course how they mount onto our camera builds are all very important things to know. That said, let's dive in. Lens filters traditionally have come in one of two configurations, the first being a rectangular filter like this. This is something that you will very commonly find on film sets and on cinematography cameras, and that is because these work with a matte box system, meaning that we don't need to change out the filters every time we do a lens change. They will stick directly in the matte box. We can stack them as we want to. Uh, there's a lot of versatility here. The drop is they are excessively expensive, uh, especially for good ones, right? You, if you find cheap ones, they're going to give you things like color casting where they're not going to give you true color. You're going to get a lot of uh, infrared noise leak that's coming through. There's going to be a lot of issues with less expensive filters. So this can be kind of cost prohibitive for a lot of filmmakers, especially owner operators that are just starting out. The more common type of lens filter you will find is this, which is a circular filter. These will screw directly onto the front of the lens and allow you to, of course, work that way. The issue with these is while they are more cost effective than their rectangular counterpart, they do screw directly onto the lens, meaning that you would then have to trade this out in addition to each lens every time you do a lens change. And some lenses have different lens fronts than others, which means you either then need to get more filters for more lens front sizes or get step up rings that will then work with a variety of lenses. Either way, really slowing down the efficiency of your film. And that of course brings us to the product we are looking at today, which takes kind of a best of both worlds approach to their filters. We have looked at Vaxxis products before, uh, link up over there for that. These are the Vaxxis FX filters, uh, which kind of are a little different looking. They come in these wonderful leather pouches with magnetic clasps on them. But as you can tell, uh, while this is circular, like the circular lens filters we looked at before, uh, there are no threads or mounting for this. So this takes an approach that kind of marries the two together. We have the ease and simplicity of a circular filter with the robust functionality of a matte box filter. But obviously, as you can tell, there's there's no way to mount this on its own, which brings us to the matte box system that it works with. Now, while there are more that are coming on the market right now, the only one that it works with is this, which is the Tilta Mirage matte box system. I'm sure you've seen this online. It's incredibly popular because it is both cost effective for a matte box system, compact, lightweight, and quite modular. In fact, you can see here uh, that I have actually purchased a second filter tray, and we'll talk about why I have done that, as well as getting things like a rail mounting system for it. So if I didn't want to clamp it onto a lens front, I could actually just use this on rails, which makes it a little easier for lens changes. So having something that is compact, lightweight, affordable, and still versatile makes this a great pairing for these filters. And I'll show you why here. If we close down the flag here in the front and we go to the back, I will pull out one of these filter trays, which looks like this. I can then simply take my filter, place it in here and lock it in with this little tab and it mounts in securely like this, which then means I can just take this and drop it in quite seamlessly. And now I have this attached to my matte box instead of directly to the lens. I have, as I said, added the second tray. If you just buy the matte box on its own, it only comes with 
one filter tray. But the nice thing with this particular filter tray that it comes with is that it does have this rotation option here, which we will get into in a second. It is very important and awesome that it has that. All right, let's talk about how we mount this map box onto a uh, camera here. So again, looking at this, this is the two trays. I've added this tray. It was an add-on that I went ahead and I bought because stacking filters is something that's important. If I want to use my neutral density filters and a black mist filter, for example, uh, you need to make sure you have two trays for that. Uh, I do know that Tilta does make a tray that supports two filters. That's not what I have here. I have one that is our circular uh, rotating filter and the one that is our just straight filter there. So if you do want to stack, those are add-ons. Uh, by default, the way that this map box works is it is what we would call a clamp on map box where this right here gives us a lot of freedom here to be able to add pressure in this ring when we mount it onto something. Uh, that said, of course, this is a very large opening, uh, which means that unless you have very large standard cinema lenses, uh, this is gonna be too wide for the lenses that you have. So when you buy the Mirage, it comes with a series of step-up rings for clamp on. And I believe it's 67, 72, 77, and 82 millimeter lens fronts, which is quite standard. So uh, for us, we are going to look at the 82. And the way that this works is you would take a camera or lens on a camera like this. This is my Komodo. The front of this is 82 millimeters. This is the 82 millimeter step up ring. So I can just take this, screw it onto the front. Sorry about that sound. And then this guy, I can loosen this knob right here, which is adjusting that tension. I can place it on the front of this and then I can simply uh, tighten it down like that. And that is our uh, mat box, which then means I can then pull these trays up and out and do uh, everything I need to that way. Now, this system still does require our step up ring to be on the lens, which means even though I have all of my filters successfully mounted in here and I don't need to unscrew and rescrew filters on, I am going to need to make sure that I am screwing this off and then, of course, putting it onto the new lens uh, when I do a lens change. So that's fine for most circumstances. Again, it's easier to just have to do one and still get all the functionality of a matte box. But the other thing that I like is that with the Mirage system, you can also uh, add this little upgrade here, which is for a rail system. So if you are using a kitted rail system like this for follow focus, fizz, uh, other mounting uh, accessories, wireless transmission, that kind of thing, uh, you can then of course have the map box mounted onto it via rails, which then even gives you more flexibility because you then don't have to add any sort of step up ring every time you do a lens change. This guy just locks on like that. So now I have this directly on rails and it makes doing lens changes that much faster. The first ones we're going to be looking at should sound somewhat familiar. If you are a filmmaker and have been using one of these screw on filters or circular lens filters, you probably have heard of a neutral density filter. If you are unfamiliar with ND or neutral density, this is simply stopping down the light that is coming into the lens before it then goes through the lens to hit the sensor. A very poor analogy is that they are like sunglasses for your camera. But good neutral density has no color casting. It should be completely neutral, hence the name neutral density. Cheaper filters and a lot of circular variable filters are going to give you casting at different levels within their range. The Vaxis neutral density comes in a variety of intensities or a variety of stops. And that is because each one of these is going to give you the most optical clarity with the least amount of color casting possible. And in fact, in my testing, I have found no color casting through the entire range, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 1.2. 
two. Uh, again, all working in varying amounts of stopping our light down. But if you look at this, it also says IR in front of it, IR and D. And that is because all of these filters are coded with an infrared light blocker. This is something that is uh, much more important in the digital world than it ever was in analog. Digital sensors are much more sensitive in shadow areas. And that is of course where we get a lot of that infrared light that's coming in. And the more we stop down the amount of light that's coming into the lens, the more susceptible it is to getting a shift in color due to light pollution coming from that infrared spectrum of light. If this sounds too heady, I, I understand. There's a lot of things that go into it. The thing that you really need to know though is that because all of these filters have an infrared blocker coating on them, you can confidently stop down the amount of light that's coming into your lens without having to worry about your shadows casting magenta or green or yellow or blue. So you're gonna get a much truer color across the entire spectrum than you would with a circular variable filter or with any sort of neutral density that doesn't have IR blocking built in. And then if you look really, really closely, and I'm going to try my best so you can see it on camera, but I don't know if you will, there is an etched or engraved label of what the filter is along the bottom edge of one side. So if for some reason you have a bunch of filters and you're trying to remember which one is which, these are all beautifully labeled, uh, etched directly into the glass in a place that's not going to be in the way of your image. So having a set of ND filters to pair with your lens and camera configuration is a must have for any filmmaker, regardless of what you film, because this gives you now the freedom of creative choice as opposed to making choices out of necessity. So if you take nothing else from this video, you need to invest in good, high quality, neutral, density and it is worth having individual stops as opposed to having a variable solely for the optical quality that things like this will produce. Now, in terms of neutral density, this is something that's a little bit harder to kind of look at, but what we're gonna do is we're going to change the f-stop to maintain our exposure through the range of four. So this is our uh, clean image with no neutral density. This then is our 0 0.3 IRND, adjusting our aperture uh, to make sure we maintain exposure. Again, doing the same thing. This is the 0 0.6, adjusting the aperture to maintain exposure. This is the 0 0.9 with, again, uh, aperture you know, adjusted. And then finally, the most intense, which is going to be the 1.2 with our aperture adjusted. So you can see here, without the filter, against the most intense version of the filter, you can see just how dramatic a shift it is in the overall look with our shallow depth of field, while still maintaining a proper exposure. Having that creative latitude of how much light do we wanna let in for the F-stop or T-stop that we plan on shooting is such a great way of being able to make creative decisions without being forced into making decisions solely based on available light. The next filter is another must have filter in any filmmaker's kit, and that is the polarizing filter. Uh, we call it a polarizing filter, not because it likes to argue with people, but solely because it absorbs sunlight rays. And while that sounds wild, the way that it works is even crazier. So this is a rotating filter, which means to get the effective working look out of it, we need to have the ability to rotate this filter around. And that is because we want to adjust or change the angle at which this filter absorbs light rays. So we would use this for things that have reflection, that have glare, or 
if you're shooting outside and you want to bring the sky or the intensity of the sky down. It feels like magic, but again, we need to make sure that this can rotate. And that's again, going back to the Mirage filter, it does have a rotating tray. The rotating tray works quite similarly to the standard tray, but instead of having one tab here, we actually have two kind of on the angle here. So again, we take our filter, set it in the base and set it down here. We then lock that down there. And you can see here with this little tab, I can then rotate that filter. And that is then going to adjust my image so I can get the exact angle that I'm looking for. So if you're filming cars and we need to film through a window or windshield, this is how you would see the person through the window without just seeing the glare or the reflection. Your standard circular polarizer, like this guy here, is gonna average about a stop and a half in terms of how much light it's going to reduce coming in. So not as crazy as some of our neutral density, but just enough to be able to get a beautiful working image. So anytime you're working with windows, anytime you're working with windshields, anytime we're working with glare, reflection, glass, water, this is an absolute must have. And this working again in conjunction with the Mirage system makes it effortless to be able to rotate my filter around to get the desired look out of it. The next filter type we're looking at are going to be diffusion filters. Now, while Vaxis does make more diffusion filters than what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to give you an example of one of each. We have the black mist filters, which are black diffusion or halation filters. And then we have what they call Prolora, which is going to be a white halation or white diffusion uh, system. Now, if you are wondering about the names here, these just are the uh, Vaxis naming for what we would call traditionally a black promist filter filter and a pearlescent filter. So if you're looking for those, that's what these are. The naming hierarchy is just different here. So starting with our black mist filters, you will see that I have three of them and they are by different intensities. We have one eighth, which is going to be the least. We have a quarter, which is going to be in the middle. And then we have a half, which is going to be the most. This is not about stops of light. This is just the intensity of the effect effect that these produce. But if we look at how this filter affects the image when compared to a clean shot with no filtration, you'll notice a couple of things, especially the more intense we go with this effect. This is a halation filter, meaning that what it is going to do is it is going to take the highlights and spill them over the rest of our image, adding warmth to the overall tone. But what's fascinating about this filter is that it does not affect the color rendition of skin tones. This merely takes what halation would be if we were filming analog and adds that effect to digital.
black mist filters get used all the time. It's just a way of getting what we would call a filmic look while still shooting in high res digital. They're awesome. The next diffusion filters that we are going to be looking at are going to be what they call Perlora. Perlora, uh, if we are going with the traditional naming structure, would be called pearlescent. So if we are looking for a pearlescent filter, this is that. And again, same thing, eighth, quarter, and half stop. Least intense, most intense. This gives us just a little bit of spice over our image. This is for straight up dream sequences, flashbacks, that kind of thing. These filters are made to kind of be like real life Photoshop. So instead of just attacking the highlights or the white and really adding that halation to our overall image, these diffusion filters primarily work with skin tone. The idea is that it will create a, a lush or velvety or, or glamorous look to your image. It is worth noting that people with less melanin in their skin, with a lighter complexion, it is going to be less is more for that because it is going to be much more photosensitive in that way. Uh, folks with more melanin in their skin or with a darker complexion is not going to be as noticeable in the lighter or, or lesser settings. So you can adjust as needed, but regardless of someone's complexion or pigment in their skin, this is a fantastic filter for just giving your overall image a sense of richness or, or, or softness while still maintaining the sharpness of focus that you need in your image. So whether you are using the uh, clamp on step up rings or you go ahead and get the added uh, rail accessory that you can buy, either way, you're still going to be getting all of the flexibility and all of the function that you would be getting out of a traditional map box system at a fraction of the cost while still getting the cost effectiveness and convenience of your circular lens filters. So this whole system is great in that it combines the best of our matte box system with filter trays and our screw on lens system. We get all of the best things. And again, at a price that is uh, quite compelling, even compared to circular filters, traditional circular filters like this guy here, uh, the Vaxxis FX filters uh, are much more cost effective, especially when you consider the efficacy of those filters. Lens filters up to this point have very much been a get what you pay for situation where if you want to save money and you go with a less reputable brand or a cheaper brand, you're going to be getting an inferior product. 
where if you spend the money to go with a reliable brand, you are going to be spending so much money that you might as well, you know, uh, find a new hobby. I don't know. It's crazy. And that's about it for filters today. If you liked this video, two favors, please subscribe if you have not already and like this video that lets me know who likes things and what content you would like me to create. If you use filters, if you'd like to use filters, if you want to change the filters you're using, comment down below. I want to know what you're using and the uh, way in which you are using them. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode.